probably should. I'm setting up my YouTube that way. It's recorded. Okay. It's low or unplugged. That's great. That sucks. Let me see. Y'all might hear, um, what do you call it? A feedback. Looks like it works here. Hey, Ava. Did Parker get banned? That's what I heard. Yeah, it's just low. Okay. Well, I'm trying. I'm speaking right into it. I'm scared. Every time I try to fix stuff like that, I just mess it up. Hey, Maya. Yeah, a billion dollars, Anna. Or Anna. Anna, Anna. Is there a way to know how you pronounce Anna? Is it? Or do you just have to ask the person if it's Anna or Anna? Is one N make a difference? Uh, you don't have enough followers. That's sad. What's up, YouTube people? I see you, YouTube punk. I see you, Dessel and Daniel. Okay, what's up, LeBron? Can you? Oh, yep. You, you um, you're gonna prove that God exists to me. Yeah. I mean, I think. Do that. I think. So, do I start? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so this universe is finite, limited, and independent, and all finite, limited, and independent quantities have to have a necessary ex explanation. That's where God comes in because he is that necessary explanation that would, you know, that created all this stuff. Okay, so God being necessary all exists in, in every case, right? All yeah, and, ex and necessary as in, like, you know, Necessary as in he has to exist, not not necessary as in like he has no Yeah, he, I know what you mean. That is like yeah. Yeah. The problem is that if God explains anything then, um then that thing would be necessary as well. Because if God's if God explain God himself being necessary explains something else, then explanations are entailing. So that would make this universe necessary. So with well, hold on. So if God explains something, that means that that thing is necessary. Right. Which you don't believe. In fact, you said stuff that contradicts it. You think this universe is presumably contingent. Yeah, I, I believe it's dependent, but I, that doesn't mean I believe it's not necessary. I can believe something to be necessary. Look, the point is that if you have a necessary dependent. fact that explains some other fact, right? You have a conditional. Given that necessary fact, then that other fact. But since the antecedent is necessary, and if the consequence is entailed in the conditional, then the consequent will be necessary as well. So then if God explains the universe and all in it... Um, hey, well, I don't all... really get what you said. Okay, so you know how explanations work, right? Explanations ground conditionals. Like, if X explains Y, then you have a conditional if X, then Y, right? Yeah, I sort of see that. Okay, that's a conditional. So if X, then Y. If X is necessary and Y is, enta and y is entailed by X, given that it explains Y, then Y will be necessary too. Because every time if X can't fail to exist, then Y won't fail to exist because it's entailed by X. So All right. you have a nece everything's necessary on your view. That's why I don't think contingency arguments work well. Well, the thing is, is that not everything that's necessary is an attribute of god because i feel i feel like you're you're trying to say that i believe the universe is necessary therefore like i'm saying that it's like a part of god like i think that's what you're trying to say no, but I'm, are our explanations like, entailing but, to the ground conditionals pardon do you accepted that explanations ground conditional so if um let's say um, the, the, the apple that fell from the tree caused my pain, explains why I have pain, then you have a conditional. Given that the apple fell, then you have I have pain. You know, if, oh. apple falls, if that apple falls, then I'll have pain on my head. Right? That's yeah. what explanations do. But if, you, if they end, so there are two parts of a conditional, the antecedent and the consequent. If P, then Q, P is the antecedent, Q is the consequent. If P is necessary, then Q, if Q is entailed by P, then Q will be necessary as well. 
So what happens if it's necessary? Well, nothing can be different than it is. So you don't have anything contingent. Presumably, well, do, you have, do, you, do you have to exist? I don't have to exist, no. Yeah, but if God explains why you exist, then... Uh, or at least if the universe... If God, if God explains why there's a universe, rather than no universe, then the universe is going to be necessary. He doesn't explain why he exists. He curated me, but that doesn't mean he explained why I does exist. God explain, does God explain everything contingent? No. Okay. So, okay. Then let's, does God does God explain the universe? Yeah. He talks about how he credited in and that. All right. So then you have yeah. that conditional, right? And if God is a necessary fact or a necessary being, and he explains something else, that, that will be entailed as well. But that's, that's basically why I don't accept the PSR, the principle of sufficient reason. Not everything is going to have an explanation, or you can't have things anyway. Uh, not every contingent fact can have an explanation. Ex well, 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 one second. Explanation as in we don't know how it came, or, or no. like... Your argument presupposes that for all contingent things, they must have an explanation. And for the set of all contingent things, there can't be a contingent explanation because that belongs to the set of things that need to be explained. And so there must be a necessary explanation for all the set of all contingent things. But then that would just completely undermine the notion of contingency because then all those contingent things are in fact necessary well all right and not to mention i mean just uh even if you were right my the thing is that you're hybridizing necessary being with things that you know something that has human traits like will and good and morally upright or whatever right i don't see well, why you don't should... distinguish between necessary being and something that has human traits like 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 the universe you know you no, say that, that it's necessary could, being even but it still right, has human traits even if you were like do you think a necessary condition for god uh god's existence is that there's something morally perfect so i think a necessary existence for god is that he's more he's perfect yeah yeah okay but you see that's not entailed if you even if you were to su succeed in saying that there's a a necessary thing you're gonna have to provide arguments for why that necessary thing is morally perfect omniscient um omni uh, uh, all powerful um, omnipotent amongst other things and i don't think you could do that either even if you were right i think we can okay go ahead give me the argument like that that we can prove that he's all powerful prove that that if there's a necessary fact that grounds all other contingent facts or explains all other contingent facts prove that that thing is morally perfect well morally perfect um very simple because he is that ob ob objective truth if he is that necessary existence god in this case but some people are scared to use the term god but if he is no, that's that, what you're trying to establish you're trying to establish the existence of god for you to do that you must establish what you're pointing to is i think that's god well you have to establish that that Thing is morally perfect. no we're talking about morally perfect not god morally perfect is we god necessarily talking... morally perfect is that a necessary attribute of yeah. God? yeah yeah so yeah you have to establish this necessary thing as morally perfect for me to think that it's god well is he's morally perfect because he is god because he is because god I, that's, is... What, well, no, that's what's the question no because he's what do you think my question something... is Look, if something is all knowing, Wait, that I, I, you're, not that clear. you're not clear. You're not clear on the question I'm asking. I don't know. What do you think I'm asking? You're trying to ask if he's morally perfect, and I'm saying he's morally perfect no, because no, no, he's, no. All, knowing. he's all knowing. Let that... me repeat my question. That way you understand what you're trying to answer. Okay. Say you establish there's a necessary being. Say you succeed in doing that, which you haven't. Okay. You have to point to, to say that that necessary thing is God. You have to show that that's morally perfect, that necessary being is perfect. And so you have to provide an argument how you're going from a necessary being to that necessary being is morally perfect. That's what I'm asking. Well, if I haven't proved that he exists according to you, I can't really prove that he is this. I... I'm granting you that there's a necessary being. <laughs> Oh, all right. 
So now I have to prove that he's morally perfect. Yeah, suppose you're right. I don't think you are. Suppose your argument goes through. Suppose a contingency argument is a good argument. There's a necessary being out there that explains uh, all contingencies. Very easy. You have to. What's very easy? That he's more so because he's because he's the objective truth. Other people, humans are subjective. You know, they have subjective values. How objective opinions? You know, liberal and conservative, all this type of stuff. But God, he because he is the he is that objective truth because he's. How do you know that interviews. necessary being is God? That's the question. Necessary being is God. We just use it as the could term. A necessary, okay, look, could a necessary being be evil? Because no one, no one second. Because atheists are scared of the term God, so we just use yes, a necessary existence as a substitution for I'm God. Not, I'm not scared of the term God. I'm showing you that even if you establish a necessary being. You can't show whether it's good or evil. True, some beings are evil. It could be a necessary being and be evil as fuck. Yeah, right? that's so, it. And that wouldn't be God. Would you say a necessary being that's evil is God? No. Right. So you see the burden. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next person. I have nine people in the request box. Yeah, but all right. I'll talk to you later. Maybe I'll gain more knowledge in that. Um, but yeah, Absolutely, man. Yeah. yeah. You take care. Take care, too. Hey, man. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, you want to try to prove the existence of God, or did you have a question? Oh, oh no, bro. I can't, I can't debate you on that, man. Because uh, me and you, like, we talk all the time with uh, on Mikey's uh, channel, man. I'm not going to go on that, brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Why did you request? Um, I just wanted to get your – I really wanted to get your uh, personal opinion on this, man. Um, yeah. You know how we have different uh, dating styles of, like, Carbon-14, radio? I don't know. Like any LA? science shit. I'm not a scientist. You're, ask oh. Dr. Blitz. Oh, Blitz, but, man? Okay, okay, okay. okay. But yeah. the thing is, like, uh, I was just researching it too, man, uh, into like the dating of like how we get to the measurements of years and everything else, right? And then I was looking into like how do we date the galaxies and the differences and the light years of um, how, like, how we actually know the actual basis of how many years and everything else. And, uh, and when you, and when I'm looking at it, man, it's, it's like the Hubble's law, and then actually, like, this is operational, like, in the physical um, cosmology uh, theory. Yeah, you're asking the wrong person. I'm going to stay in yeah. my lane. The little that I know is going to be philosophy. I, I, I know the most basic science ever, and so. But Blitz is your guy. Talk to Doctor Blitz about that. Yeah, I have to like. I'll try to get with him too, brother. Um, yeah, he's pretty accessible, so he hosts lives. All right. I'm, yeah, I'm Sorry, still learning a lot of any... stuff too, man. Oh no, you're good, man. I yeah, always like uh, I always like the talks with you and Mikey and all that, and all the talks we actually go through and all the uh, other things. And I'm surprised you don't have your other uh, character on today, man. Other uh, Danny Dawa, yeah, that's my yeah. where I misbehave, I guess. But all right, take care, Mister. All right, see you, man. Bye. Okay. Okay. What's up, Reese? Hello. Hey, what do you want to talk about, Reese? Um, can you see me? No. Okay. Did I cut my hair? No, it just got shorter. So, somehow. can you see me now? I can see you, Reese. Yeah, what's so, up? So, uh, if God doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. How would the Bible like be written? Like how? Like who would write the Bible if God didn't write it? Well, I think a lot of people wrote the, the various, you know, books in the Bible. Because Bible means collection of books. God wrote the Bible. What are you asking me? Like, cause God actually like wrote the Bible. You think right? God wrote the Bible? Yeah, like with his with his hand. Are you trolling me, Reese? <laughs> yeah. Why are you doing this to I me, just, man? I just thought it was funny. Sorry. I've, oh my goodness. Hello. What's up? Well, I mean, oh. Yeah. You want to prove God exists? Uh, I'm gonna try. for a billion dollars. I mean, like, well, He'll be as rich as Taylor Swift. I mean, I guess it's going to be like the best conclusion or the best. Uh, I mean, compared to every other belief, what, like, what do you believe in? I, for I, this is my first time here, so like, what would you believe? How everything is made? I'm an atheist. So you don't believe in a god, or what? What do they, yeah, do they believe have? Any god. other belief than they don't believe in God? I don't believe in God. That's so. What? Oh, mm -hmm. 
That's all that you believe then? What do you mean that's all that I believe? That's all that you believe is that you believe there is no God. No, I believe other things. And I So where, where do you get those where do you get those beliefs from? The ones depends, that you do believe in. It depends on the kind of belief it is. So where do you get that? I'm just just wondering, like do you judge it yourself? It depends on the belief, right? Some beliefs I get yeah, from yeah, other yeah. people, some beliefs I get from my perception, some beliefs are okay. just yeah, I mean, just so you make your own truth, what, what you think to be. Where, how are you getting that? How are you getting that? Well, you just said what you think is true. You just said. No, I didn't say that. Look, the thing is that our beliefs come from various sources. They don't all come from the same source. So some people tell us things and we believe it, right? True. So if you no, told me yeah. you, oh, yeah, yeah. So if you told me you owned a, a Honda Accord, right? I probably yeah. believe that. It seems plausible. Okay. That. How did I get that knowledge? Well, I have a background in information about people owning cars and type types of cars they own. Yeah. You're going to tell me that I have no problem believing it. But, you know, then there's like mathematical proofs. I can like prove something mathematically and then come to a belief via, you know, the correct form or whatever. I can I believe a, a true yeah. mathematical conclusion. That's very different than when than you tell like me. Like a science. Honda You're right. Like there's science ways to prove stuff. Like someone could have a Honda, but put a different logo on it. And it's not even a Honda. You know what I mean? Or a different car and put the Honda logo on it. How do you what know? What does this have to do with logo? you proving God exists? I'm just, I'm just saying for, I, I'm getting there. I'm getting to it. So, so with, with scientific proof, right? That's how you prove something to be true, or, it just or you have to not test always. Something. Some mathematical. I don't think mathematical proofs to be scientific ones. Okay, so even science can be wrong. Can scientists be wrong? Yes, scientists yeah. can be wrong. So even scientists are wrong. Okay, so sometimes they are wrong. Yes. <laughs> In yeah, fact, yeah. That the whole point are, is to find out what we're wrong about because we're they probably actually wrong are about wrong something. a lot. They are wrong a lot. Actually. And they publish well, stuff that, that like, they shouldn't be publishing. I, the connotation, I, I mean, look, people can be wrong, right? Uh, yes. Overall, so, I think scientists, I decided okay. to do a really good job. So the only one who, who can't be wrong, right? So so the only way to know anything to be true, right, is to know everything for certain, 100%. Where are you getting this? For certain, you right? making this up? No, I'm not making this up. No, no, no. To, in order to know anything to be true, you if need you're not making it up, where are you getting certainty, this from? right? If you're not making it up, where are you getting it from? I'm just curious. Like, uh, how did you get I'm that kidding. statement that you have, in order to, like, you have to have 100% certainty that claim? You, have to, have, you, you have to have absolute certainty to know anything to be true, where right? Where are you getting that from? Because you didn't get that from me. I know. I'm not getting that from you. No. Where did you get it from? The one who knows everything. The one that, you got that from God. Yeah. There's only just give me your proof only, that God exists. Okay, so, so basically... In order to know anything to be true, you have to know absolutely everything for certain, right? No, why would I you ever don't, agree well, Is there a chance you could be wrong about anything you claim to be true? Is there a chance? Yes. Okay, so so there you go. So you just gave up your logic and reason to even to, to consider How? something How? to be look, fact. Because you could I, be wrong about look, everything I, you I, think I, is true. I believe you're over the age of 18. I think it's very likely. Could, could I be wrong? wrong yes. What's could the problem here? But the more you talk, now I'm starting to doubt. Are you of the age of 18? Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay, so... The point is that I could be wrong about that. You could be wrong. Okay, I'm not though, throwing right? away logic and reasoning just because I'm saying... Yeah, I but be you could be that. wrong. You don't know for sure. Yeah, but there are things I knew for sure. Well, you're going to be... I don't know for sure. The things I know and I'm like, I don't really have a specific credence level that's like that high. Okay, well, not only that, now, okay, now say someone, some book was written, okay, like the Bible, right, for instance, it was written thousands of years ago, right, and it made accurate, like, 2,000 accurate predictions in the future of what's going to happen. Name and, your and best one, just name your best the one. The best one, the earth is round and floats in space, unique sphere. That's not a predict, that's not a predict. Yeah, what do you mean, they thought the earth was flat thousand years ago, some dumb fisherman knew it was flat. If it was round floating in space. Making the, a claim is not more stars right? if I, than if I claim that, sand on the earth. If I claim that there's uh, there's life you know, in man, the fishermen if, if, know if that. I claim if I claim that there's life in another galaxy, is that okay. The, okay, if I make that claim, am I like is that like a prophecy? Well, if if you can prove it, then then it comes true as a prophecy. And let, until okay, you well, prove you it, and I mean something different by prophecy. So okay, here's another one. If circumcised your young on the eighth day, how why did they do that? This is the because, best shit you got. No, no, I'm just saying. Give me the best one. There's 350. Give me the best one. What do you mean? Died on the cross. What do you mean? Born of a virgin. This is weak sauce. Born from a virgin. There you go. That's a pretty good one. That's your best one? That's a pretty good one. How how is a virgin? Is that your best one? Is that your best one? That's a pretty good one. Uh, Oh, no. How about died died and rose from the dead? How's that one? 
Okay, do you know people can get pregnant without having sex? How about died and rose from the dead? Hey, Buster, out. Buster, do you know people can get pregnant without having sex? Yeah, you can, yeah. You can, you can okay, put it's not you so miracle, technically, in somewhere. Okay. by itself, that's not a You're right, okay, so how about dying and resurrecting from the one. dead? No, 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 how about dying and resurrecting from the dead? How's that one? Why would I ever believe someone rose from the dead? Hmm? Why would I ever believe someone rose from the dead like that? Because <laughs> that happened. I don't think you're intellectually prepared for this conversation. What do you mean? That actually happened. What are you talking about? Talking there's about eyewitnesses it. and there's testimony. What are you talking about? I'm not wasting my time. All right. What's up? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I'll, be, I'll treat you well. Don't worry. Just don't do what he did. Okay. I'm not going to try to prove God exists because... I'm sure someone can explain it way better than I can that knows more about it. Okay. But even if someone did explain it, I'm pretty sure you don't have a billion dollars. So just have faith. Just have faith that I have a exactly. billion dollars. Exactly. So let's just have faith that you have a billion dollars. Prove that there you, you have a billion dollars. <laughs> I'm telling you, just have faith. No need for proof. And that's oh, silly. Okay, just, proof. You exactly. You don't need proof of God. Just have faith. <laughs> okay. Well, then it's fine. If you can't prove that God exists, if it's a matter of faith, I'm going to leave you alone. Okay, well, touche. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your request. I was going to say something else, but I forget. Of course, now go ahead. No, you me forgot me already? Yes. Um, he threw me off. Um, what kind of Christian are you? A craft Catholic? Uh, I'm a Baptist. Protestant. Like, my uncle is a preacher. Southern Baptist? Just Baptist. I don't know. Just Baptist. I was raised like, Southern Baptist. Yeah, I grew up in church. My uncle is a preacher, but I still, like, I'm my own person. I don't agree with everything that they say. Like... Name What's your big, what's your most controversial take on your religion? Mm, I don't know. I've heard that some like Baptists or Christians. Are you okay with the gays? I am. Yeah. I know okay, there's well, a lot that, of them. Based. Yeah. I know that's there's based. a lot of them that aren't, but I am. I mean, be yourself, whatever. You know, they're, they're probably going to burn you at the stake now. I hope no one, no, I hope the 481 people that are watching, none of them know you from your church because. You know. Well, I'm saved, so I think I've gone down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Happy nice send. Request. Everybody sends, huh? Okay, yeah, everybody does. All right, <laughs> I'll see you later. Unless there's something else you had, you, unless you remembered. I did. I don't remember now. <laughs> okay. Well, you have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Andrew. What do you want to talk about? I can prove God. Go ahead. Google Tim Tebow, John 316. Tim Tebow, the football player? Yeah. What does he have to do with any of this? Google Tim Tebow, John 316. No, I'm not doing that. You tell me. Tell me what I'd find. Um, it's actually really cool. All right. I'll I find something cool. That's in, that helps. Okay, I'll prove God another way. What okay now? What would I don't? I can't imagine how this would be convincing to go to Google Tim Tebow John three sixteen. I know what both of those are. I don't see the combination as like helping you out because I know Tim Tebow is a very devout Christian, right? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll want me to read you the article. No. <laughs> no, I don't want you to read an article on here. Why do you believe in God, Andrew? Um, because there was these Jews, and these Jews were super, super Jews, and they were so certain that Jesus was blasphemy, and they magically became Christian like overnight. What right. else your, um, could have caused your, that? Abort, abort, mayday, mayday. We're going down. Next guest. Abort. Abort. <laughs> Yo. What's up, Alex? Yo, man. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. What do you what do you want to talk about? I'm just wondering, man. You ask for proof, right? Is what you have dedicated not only this night, but many nights, this entire account, what do you feel within you has caused you? To create your entire account based on disproving this one God. So you're asking me why I'm doing this? 
Kind of, but also to like self reflect. Do you do you feel? I do this for the money, attention, and the bitches. There's so many other niches though. Something pulled you to this one. Yeah, I, I I told you. Oh, this one because I used to be a Christian. How long? Twenty years. Um, from birth, I'm assuming to twenty. No, or... I'm thirty one. Oh, word! You look good for thirty one, man. I appreciate that. Um. The devil gave me great genetics. <laughs> Potentially, right? Yeah, um, so I can deceive people like you. Is that okay, a she? Right. Are you a she? Is that, I can't tell what your profile is. Um, it's just a cross. It's a light cross. I thought it was a sheep. Anyways. Um, but yeah, um, how long have you been well, agnostic, atheist? I'm an atheist. Uh, since 20, 2020. 2020, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you feel was the plug for that or the like the pulling of the plug, I should say? That God gets what he wants. If he gets what he wants, this is the world that he wants. And that doesn't seem like what Christianity teaches. Christianity doesn't seem to teach that this is the world that God wanted. What makes you think that? Well, have you done any research on human history? I would say a fair bit. Okay. What, what would you rate it? Like 20th century, for instance, how would you rate the 20th century? So let's say God is a creator, right? Let's just say a creator of this reality. How would I rate the 20th century? Yeah. Uh, I mean, 20th century sucked. Uh, there's been worse. <laughs> it sucked. Two huge world wars, genocides all over the littered around the world. You think that's God's fault, though? Or is that a product of that, free will? God can prevent it if he wants to, right? Yes, but that would but be he impeding wanted on it to will. happen. If he didn't want it to happen, he'd prevent it. But that's impeding on our free will. That's the entire purpose. Fine. Okay, this. that he wanted those things to happen for the sake of our free will. Mm, yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah, he wants to decide. No, he doesn't want this to happen. He wants, he wants to, to have decide free will. for the preservation of free will. Because the only way to feel love. Danny, like genuine love is through free will. That's great. I'm not disagreeing right Correct. now yes. with that. I'm pointing out that God wants genocides because of free will and love, which well, doesn't sound right. Both but sides of it, man. That is the beauty of this creation. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> okay. Well, do you think it's loving to stop someone else from hurting another? So you're asking God to impede on free will? Just answer that question for me. Well, you know what the answer is. It's like a gotcha. It's it's not it really a gotcha. a gotcha, though, because yes. it is on free will. Walk into the trap, Alex. Just step in it. Well, you're it's not at... really a trap if I told you it's a trap beforehand, though. Well, yeah, but you're, the funny thing is you're still going to step in it. Well, no, because the whole concept, I mean, we can keep going back and forth. The whole purpose of this creation is that we have free will. It is a judgment. What do you mean by free will? Is... What do you mean? What do I mean, free will? Yeah, what do you mean? I think I most Christians, will, when they appeal to free will, they don't even know what they're talking about. I have the will to do things freely. Oh, that. Oh, okay. Um, well, to be fair, it's a difficult question. I shouldn't mock you. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about that question. So my bet on that. You have to do more than that. What does that mean, what you just said? The ability to make free choices or whatever. I don't understand what's the need to make it any more convoluted than that. Does God have free will? I mean, God is an eternal being. We can't really comprehend. That's great. Does he have free will? You, you can say, I don't know. I, I mean, I just told you what my synopsis of it is. So if Either he that, does or he doesn't, or you don't know. I mean, I just told you my view of it. So if you I take that what, answer I get as your me view. saying, you I don't know. Clear. I told you what the consensus is for theists. For you. Like, I don't care about you. Alex, view. you're the special one tonight. right? I don't care about all of your friends. I care about you. Wait, I mean, I just view it as me and you, man. Does God have free will, yes or no? You don't know. Well, technically, God is all-knowing, all-powerful. So I guess... Uh, it's like I'm it. asking for your phone number and you're giving me your address. This isn't... Come on, man. No, you're asking me... I want your phone number, answer. not your address, Alex. Huh? Does God have free will, Alex? You can say, I don't know, and I'll respect you for that. Oh, okay, for the sake of us continuing this conversation, I don't know, Danny. Okay. Well, so it's possible that God is just like a robot. Potentially. 
Oh, does can robots love? Well, that's a completely different topic of conversation. No, you brought up the love. What are you talking about? That's why I brought this up. Well, I said the purpose of this creation is to experience that. Yeah, to experience love. The very thing that God may not be able to experience because he's a robot. Well, I mean, if you think God is a robot, then I guess that's a fair judgment. But you are entertaining the possibility. I mean, I'm an open-minded person, so. Okay. Do you know that God exists? I feel within me God does exist through what I've observed in the world. And okay. all my time well, I, if people will just say, I think, I believe, it seems that way, that's one thing. But then to claim to know is an altogether different cookie do mm. you know rather than simply believe or have faith well, i assume there's different stages of faith no well faith can be rational can be irrational just depends i'm asking if your faith is rational in this in in the way where you can say you know that god exists if you don't know i'm gonna leave you alone and good luck i think god does exist uh, very much so I'm, did i okay did i ask if you think i know or, danny i know oh uh, okay how do you know through points of confluence, just observing history, observing the Bible, the miracle that it took for it to come together, um, the effects that's that what, religion... That's what the Muslims tell me. The Muslim. I mean, look. Okay, let's just take one of the first thing you said. You look at human history and you think there's a God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is God defined as a good being? A loving being? Yes. Wait. I thought you said you didn't. he could be a robot. Oh, I mean, I was just entertaining your hypothetical. Don't entertain me. Give me your view, Alex. Well, I just told you, God, to me, if you want to know exactly what I view, God is the creator of this reality. What we consider God is the creator of this yeah, reality. But we're, I mean, uh, if we want to just talk about a generic, fine, but presumably you believe that to be God, like you brought up this notion of free will and love. I thought that that's mm -hmm. like, it, presumably you're a Christian. I see the cross, right? Yes. God, uh, uh, mo there's like half of Christendom that thinks that God is identical to love. Uh huh. Okay. So, but I look at human history like you do, and I think it's, I think we're far away from a loving creator if there even is one. That's if you want to focus on that side of things, though, because there's both sides of the aisle. What do you want to focus on, Alex? There's love and there's evil. That's so it depends. It on. seems that you have gone on to focus a lot on the evil, which is fair enough. You know, that's your. Yeah, I'm allowing you to change the subject. What do you want to talk about? OK, well, now you want me to switch the subject myself entirely. Well, you want to use it. I mean, you're 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 criticizing me for focusing on the problem of evil. But if that if you don't want to talk about the problem of evil, we can talk about what you want. Um, I mean, you your title says prove God exists, which, you know, no one can prove God or else this entire so all that plus. means is something like, how do you know that God exists? How is it that you know? Me personally. Well, obviously, no, no, we no. know that. Is, is your kind of knowledge that can be shared, right? Because I know that um, I, you know, I, 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 there's things that I know that I could never give that kind of knowledge to someone else, right? Like, I know how it feels to have, you know, um, I don't know, to be... I don't know, uh, kiss my wife, right? Now you can't know how that feels. Right. Hopefully not. Right. So is your, <laughs> right. is your knowledge communicable? I would say so. I think it depends on who's listening, though. Okay, is it communicable I, to why, me? That's why evangelicals, for example, people who will come to someone and be like, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you will be eternally damned to hell. That doesn't work with everyone, you know, like. Some people do it. Yeah, but, but can you communicate your knowledge to me such that I know the same thing? So you want to know basically how I believe in God? I want to – basically, I want you to offer how you know something such that I can evaluate that 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 means by which you know and whether it – and see if it applies to me. But if you're going to give some kind of subjective kind of like I had an experience kind of thing, I can't access that. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I have had an experience though, but it was after a lot of – having faith I get which i that. feel happens to a lot of people but i was agnostic up until about two years ago um what ch you asked me what changed in me now what changed in you what changed in me was i felt like something was missing like there was something that i had set aside that i had never really faced with humility to accept that the potential of there being a higher power 
So I okay. went and really researched. Are there any facts that you discovered that I could access to such that I should come to your conclusion? Um, what really changed my perspective was observing. Because, you know, atheists, you probably know yourself. A lot of them reference scientists. A lot of reference these scientific theories, which if we really break it down, it comes into faith in many in many positions. Um I observed, I read Tesla's journals, I read Newton's memoirs. Um, oh, okay. Here, let me, let me, I'm going to change this up. Okay. Let's say um, someone wanted to be a Christian. Uh -huh. Is it, or, or rather, we're wondering if someone's going to be a, become a Christian. Is it up to them or up to God or up to both? Uh, if someone's going to be a Christian, is it up to them, God, or both? Yeah. I would say one has to see the lemonade. For... That's Eve, one of my most loyal followers. Go ahead, Alex. I would say one needs to seek God first. And I feel like that's where a lot of people expect God to just magically appear in front of them. And so it's not up to God that I'm a Christian. Hmm? It's not up to God as to whether someone's a Christian or not. Are you telling me or asking me? I'm, I'm clarifying. Is it up to God if someone's a Christian or not? Yeah, is it up to God? It seems like what you said means that it's not really up to God as to whether I'm a Christian or not. It's really up to me. That's what you said. Initially, I would say so. Okay, so you have to initially start seeking. Correct. Okay, That's how do you do view. that? Teach me. Let's be, you're going to make me a Christian tonight if you're... Give me the steps. Step okay. One. Well, how it went down with me personally... No, um, no, I'm not. This is about me, Alex, not about well, you. Well, yes, you yes, but I'm telling you because I think you can relate because you're a smart dude, so I think that you could relate potentially. Okay, Because it's not me seeing, you know, an apparition on my window seal or something, no. I want step one. Step one of coming to Christian. We're going to do it tonight. Let's Researching see the three major faiths. Researching. Okay, why would that be step one? Because you want to see why are these so popular, right? You want to see why are these okay. the big three. So then I researched Marx and Nietzsche, and they say that it's a bunch of copium. Now what? Well, yeah, but then Nietzsche ended up paralyzed like seven years after writing God is Dead, so. What does it have to do with whether, whether he said it was sounds true? Kind of, you don't think that sounds a little coincidental, man? A seven-year covenant? Nietzsche ends look, up paralyzed? A look, there are people that you would call Christians that would probably be in the same situation, right? Their first day of becoming a pastor, and they get in a car wreck and die, right? Is that coincidental? Is that the devil working? Is that See, that's the, the another thing. God trying to sabotage the pastoral ministry of that person? I mean, come on. See, that's the thing. Of course. I'm, you know, I'm not being completely serious. The point serious. Is, is that you're saying do research on these religions. What if I, I what do I research? Originally, the top three to see why are they so popular. Yeah, but who do I read? Who do you read? Yeah. It depends, man. For me personally, it just came, a, just came across part by part. Um looking into the Bible, trying to verify why these things make sense. What's the counter argument? Does the Trinity make sense to you? I think so. From what I've heard, both sides, you know, like the Islamic faith, what they believe against it, the Christian faith in favor of it. Are you, are you a Muslim or a Christian? I forgot. Christian, right? Christian, yes. Okay, so um, let's say there's, we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and, and the Father. How many persons are those? You said what? Excuse me? How many persons are God? One. There's only one person? Well, it's one God. Into three. But how many persons are there? Uh, I mean, I feel like I answered that, no? There's one God into three. If you say one, I'll be very happy. One God into three persons, yes. Oh, okay. So there are how many persons? There are three persons, right? Yes. How many persons are in this live? Oh, it beats me, man. There are two, Alec. Oh, well, I thought how you many people are talk having this conversation? Yes, yes. Okay, there are two persons having a conversation right now. That Alex and Danny. Alex is human. Danny is human. How how many humans are there? Okay, you're trying to go into. I we know we've been down this route before. We've talked about this, Alex. No, I'm saying like in general. I know you've been down this rabbit hole before. What do you mean rabbit I've hole? Been down this rabbit hole before. You're going into well. It's actually three because there's two of us here in this law. That's actually three gods, so it's polytheism. I know where you're going. Okay, so how do you respond? 
Um, it's it's three persons into one, man. There's many examples of this. Th that doesn't nature. solve the problem. <laughs> Just see, repeating yeah. the doctrine doesn't help. Well, you're asking me to give you such a convoluted response when the way that I view it is so simple that there's so many different examples. I have of no nature. problem with saying that there are three persons in one God, actually. But, you know, that saying that is compatible with heresy. You say what? Just saying there are three persons in one God, just that statement alone is compatible with heresy. Well, there's a lot of that in any dom denomination. Are you a heretic? No, I wouldn't consider myself personally. Potentially, you know, I'm not the most scholar, scholar theologist of all time, so I know what I know. Alex, I think I'm just bullying you at this point. Mm, I wouldn't say so. I'm having a nice conversation. What, anything else you want to say before I move on to the next person? Um, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, Danny. I know. Curious. Why did you say that? Why was that? Okay. You think that's, you think that's gonna? Do you think that is make gonna make me more likely to accept what you're saying or less likely? Or, no, or I just need an exit line. Oh, okay. That's just you're just like making noises. Potentially, yes. I want. I do want to ask you though, Danny. Yeah. Last question, because this is of something course. that really made me ponder. Okay. As an atheist, what do you feel and what do you think about the greatest scientists that we know being theists? Okay, yeah, there are very smart people that are theists. There are people that are smarter than me that are theists. But I think that what explains why people are theists is if there's not like a theory around it. People are theists for all sorts of reasons cultural reasons. Like, for instance, uh, what percentage of philosophers are atheists? Do you know? I don't know. 70%. That makes sense, though, with, a, with an area like philosophy. Exactly, right? So the point is that just because you have a high number of atheists, I don't think that should be a reason for you. To no, but atheism. see, when we, when we look at a lot of atheism, it stems from believing in science over faith. And Again, I, I'm not so I confident. Mean, maybe that's right. Maybe that's wrong. The point is this. Look, I... What are the two the, the two disciplines with the highest IQ? Actually, I think it's the top three disciplines of people that study. Um, I guess let me let me phrase this correctly. Um, if you look at the three, the people that study uh, chat, how do I say this? Um, if you look at the, uh, the highest IQ people in the in the core in the subject that they study, do you what are the top three subjects in that category of the highest IQ people? Do you it know? It beats me, man. It's trivia, yeah. There are three, physics, philosophy, and mathematics. Sounds okay. about right. People that study those three subjects have the highest IQ. Guess what? Atheism actually strongly correlates with phys well, physics, see, IQ has philosophers, no relevance and mathematicians. That, well, that's just one metric of intelligence. It's Correct. Not, definitely I'm not the highest. It, it, I don't really put a lot of stake in IQ. I, personally, I don't know what my IQ is. If it's low, I don't really care. The, 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 what I'm trying to show you is that um, you're appealing to look at all these people that are really smart and that are that believe in God, right? I, I think that, say that, but it's not just because they're smart. It's the fact that they're the most brilliant minds we have had on this planet who the have most brilliant and that, dedicated the, the, their lives to science. Observing the most brilliant creation. people, the most brilliant minds that we tip out are going to be in those three uh, disciplines. Well, yeah, but we're also talking about greatness and the way that they've impacted society. So these these names, Tesla, Newton, Pasteur, Heisenberg, all these names, theists, and they speak about it deeply. It does, well, like, the point is that it doesn't bother me like it doesn't bother you that the smartest people on, on the planet are, tend to be atheists right now. That doesn't bother you, just like it doesn't bother me that in the past that wasn't the case. Well, I think there's a bit of of impact that goes along with things, not just simply intelligence. That's what you're appealing. You're, you literally, you're asking my opinion about what do you think about in the past? Really smart people have been theists. How do you explain that? Like, it doesn't, well, bother, it's me, not just like it doesn't bother you though, Danny. It's also people of notoriety and impact. It's not just a smart dude that I know that's so, a so math. You're not, genius. so it's not intelligence that you're tracking. It's famous. It's and popular. impact. It's intelligence. It's notoriety. It's well, look, okay. You and I agree. Look, things, like, you and I agree them. that, uh, famous people like think about politics who's at the top of politics it's kind of actually insane who's at the top of politics you got people like trump and ben shapiro and you know all these others like i mean they're they're not really i mean jordan peterson is probably the best um example of an academic being at the top of the political sphere and that's quite a disappointment imo so look they're very popular but they're all kind of 
I mean, I'm I'm not impressed. Well, yeah, but okay. that's why it's so popularity. It's, I mean, it's not whatever. just popularity though, Danny. It's what, what are, you are, talk, are you talking like about? Intelligence, that, popularity. What are you? What specifically? Uh, it's is the, everything is together. Together. here. Like if if when I was you know viewing things from a scientific lens, you know, not focusing on faith, I need to see this proven to me with science. When I read Tesla's journals, when I read Newton's memoir, Louis Pasteur's view on non-life turning into life, how he viewed that studying microbiology. These are three, you know, big household names that write deeply about God. So it's like, okay, to me, that has some weight. That's the only purpose of me mentioning it is it has some weight. Okay. Does it have any weight on you that the the smartest people currently strongly correlate with? No, see, we go in circles, man. It's not about intelligence, bro. Are you not appealing to the brilliance of Isaac Newton and Pasteur and not the, well, yes, and the others? Yes, but it's, it's not just their intelligence. Because, yes, I can name intelligent dudes are, that I know that, that, I don't that— I don't get your point, Alex. I that have never been you. heard of, that their writings haven't impacted millions of people. Is what I mean. Well, look, the prop one first thing is that science has its habit of creating large impacts on our society. We have things like this because of science, right? But mm -hmm. you're ignoring that philosophical mathematical contributions, right? Philosophical mathematical, like theoretical contributions don't impact us the way that like engineering does. So you're ignoring people like Russell, you know, Ru you know Russell or Frege or these other very famous mathematicians. Well, yeah, but see, engineers and mathematicians aren't the people that I would go to for something like this. I feel like second after scientists would be philosophers. Look, the point is that science is awesome because it has human tremendous impact on our practical lives, whereas people that are doing set theory, right, whatever theoretical stuff they're working on set theory, it seems like it won't matter to whether this is going to work or not. Right. So the only reason why people like Pasteur and Newton are so freaking famous is because they contributed to a discipline that has tremendous impact on you and I. Whereas people like Cantor and Russell, right, and Frege, all right, they their contributions are really significant in academia, but not for people like you and I. Why do we think that is? Maybe God played a hand in that, eh? You troll me. <laughs> I'm not being totally serious, Danny. Yeah, I know you're not. All right, I'm going to move on to the next person. Yes, for sure, bro. Good combo, though, man. Bye, Alex. Take care. You too. My eye it just... Oh, this person disconnected. Um, Who do we let in? I don't know. I just pick a random person. Oh, and apparently Tesla was not a theist, according to one of my followers. I don't know. I've just assumed that he was. What's up, Rod? I should believe in God. Oh, it's good, man. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's weird, right? I um, but I based my belief on on God mainly on uh, the correlation to infinity. You know how they say that God is infinity. Um, he is everything, uh, we can, and they also make the correlation in the Bible that God is in, uh, in everything. And there is an infinity within like everything. That's the main thing that like made my realization that there's a connection in the Bible. Uh, like there have been many where they state, um, stuff about life that shouldn't be known. So I should believe in God because, and then fill in the blank. Uh, you should believe in God because infinity already exists within you and God is defined as infinity in the Bible or synonymous to infinity as incapable of everything. I think that if someone were to say God is infinite, they just mean that he has no beginning or end. Right. But there's if you um, if you subdivide your like the entire mass in your body by like a million, you can still subdivide it by a billion, a hundred billion, a trillion. What does it have to do with God? Um, that it, there's a correlation, right? Because um, the Bible is an explanation of um, of. Well, the there's husband. a correlation between me and unicorns. We're both mammals, presumably. Well, actually, I mean, uh, unicorns. Actually, that's actually a good argument uh, for the validity of the Bible. Um, pre 1800s Unicorns are. 
Oh yeah. Hey Rob, you're, you're, are you a real person? You're, you're gonna you, like this one. Tell me you're a real person first. No, I'm okay. a real person. No, yeah. Like let me let me finish for real. You're gonna like this. Uh, pre 1800s. I don't word, think I will. The word unicorn pre 1800s actually meant um, rhino. It was a type of rhino, a single horned rhino, and bicorn was the other word for the double horned uh, rhino. So. I need a female. These males are going crazy. Hello. Hey, what's up, Bree? Hi. What, what do you want to talk about? Um. So tell me why you think Christopher Columbus exists or ever existed. I completely rely on scholars, the consensus of scholars that he exists. I've never seen anything directly tied to Christopher Columbus. I've never read any of his writings. I completely depend on authority for that. Exactly. So how can you say, how can we say that any of these people that we hear about in history class, how can we say they exist, but Jesus Christ didn't exist? I think Jesus existed. I'm totally fine with that. And Jesus Christ was the son of God. Well, why do you think that? Because he came back to life. And Are you over the age of 18 before we continue? No, I'm not. Well, I'm 17. I'm sorry, Brie. I, I per it's not my rule. Not my rule, okay? I think you deserve to have a conversation about these things, especially at that age, but unfortunately not on this platform. So okay. what's up, Abigail? This is so fun. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Are you over the age of 18 too? I am. I've never been Perfect. on a live before, but I was scrolling and I was like, this looks fun. Oh, this is your first live? Yes. Well, oh, you've walked into the lion's den. Um, that's okay. Okay. I'll be nice, though. Okay. Yes. What, what do you want to talk about? Are you a Christian or what? Muslim? Jew? Yeah, I'm a Christian. What kind of Christian? Catholic? Um, I would say I'm a full time missionary, so I travel the world. You're a missionary. I am. Where do so, you go? Well, I've been to India, I've been to Turkey, Brazil twice um ukraine um yeah. recently in ukraine yes i went oh wow that's intense year. you went last year last yeah. year that we were on like wow. the border of ukraine so we didn't go to like the war zone really obviously okay. it was safe but it was really sad to see what was going on there so okay so you're spreading the good news yes okay so how do you how do you do it tell me if i was like a random Ukrainian running around and I came across Abigail, how would you do it? Right, so I'll give you a prime example of this. We're okay. crossing the border from Poland to Ukraine and I see these girls with big suitcases. They're like carrying all their baggage and stuff. And so we start helping them carry their bags and I'm like, okay, they're from Ukraine. They speak English so we could talk well. And they were like, we're going home. We don't wanna stay in another country. And I was like, is it safe where you're going? And they're like, no, but we don't want to die in a country that's not ours. Like, we want to go home. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh. And so in that moment, like, we got to pray for them. And when I do share the gospel with people, I mean, even on here, like, I'm not here to prove a point, <laughs> to be okay. completely honest. Um, I like talking with people. I like hearing their stories, hearing where they're at. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I would share. If you're, like, a random Ukrainian person, I'd be like, what's your story? In that moment. Those women, they had fear. They were scared. They haven't been home since the war started. And so mm -hmm. for me, I'm going to be telling them, hey, there is a God who sees you. You were created for a purpose. And where you're headed might not be safe, but God promises to never leave us nor forsake us. Because I've seen a move. What, can I ask you about that? Yeah. That's fine. How would you know if God forsakes you? Like if he leaves us? Yeah. Yeah. Presumably, you have. God. Oh, like well, he won't let you down. I would say forsaking is like somebody that let you down. How do you know if God would let you down? I think sometimes we can let ourselves down. I don't think God can let us down because He's a good God, and He. Okay, but that's fine. But if He did let someone down, what would that even look like, in your view? I think it would be considered disappointment. You know. All right. So, like, let me give you an example. Okay. Yeah. My um. My wife, I have a wife, I'm married, and um, 
I basically all of my income goes to the bills and he has all the discretionary income. That's basically how it works. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, if she took the discretionary income and gambled it all away, which she hasn't, she's not far from a gambler. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if she did that, I don't think my wife would ever do that. Just like your God would never forsake you. My wife would never do that. But if she did, what it would look like is I, I would not be able to buy anything over, uh, past her necessities. Right. Okay. That's how that would look like. So you see, I'm giving like a concrete example. So if God forsake you, you what would happen what would be an example of that well if god let you down what would be an example hmm i for like my mom she was an atheist because her mom passed away when she was younger so with that my mom thought like god has forsaken her like why would a good god like take her mom when she was like that she would be but my you don't agree that you don't agree that that was that she was forsaken no, I don't think she was forsaken. So that's not a good example. I want an example that you believe would be an example of God forsaking someone. I don't think he can forsake somebody. So I don't know but how if to. if he did, just like, I don't think my wife would ever do that. I don't think it's in her character or her nature. But if Ooh. she did, I wouldn't be able to pay for anything past my necessities. So if you were forsaken by God, what would that look like specifically? Maybe like if I heard God say something. Like, oh, give all your money to this specific person. And then I don't have any money. I lose my house. I lose all these things. Maybe that the could Christians be him. had no money. They were, would you say, look, the, the early Christians, sorry, the early Christians, not only did they have, they didn't have any property. They didn't have no housing. They had no, they had to rely on other people. In fact, you know, as you know, they were like fed lions at some point. Did God forsake them? No, because they were saved out of the lion's den. And they were lacking nothing. No. A lot of them got shred to pieces. What was, like, do you know why they got put in the lion's Because den? of their Christian views. I think I could be right. wrong. I'm no historian so, guy in terms of the name. But look at Emperor Nero. I think he fe literally fed Christians to lions. I mean, if they got persecuted, it says in the Bible, blessed are the persecuted. So God wouldn't be forsaking them because they stood for what was right and then they got put in the lion's den blessed are the persecuted the reward is great in heaven so i wouldn't say god's forsaking them like that sucks okay. like so then what would be an example of god forsaking you it seems like you couldn't like because, I don't, let me, I think. it's a trick question abigail is it okay it's a trick, i don't know <laughs> because the idea is that i don't think you can have an example because you would say that no matter what your physical or life conditions are, it's always going to be consistent with God being there for you. But then at that point, what does it mean for God to be there for you if your life could be in any kind of way? If it could be that you're in a lion's den or if you're in the White House, right? Like it, it seems like the notion of God won't let me down or is always there for me means nothing with regard with respect to this life. Okay. So what were you asking me about him for so like take the ukrainian people you met yeah. right when you told them did you tell them that god won't let you down or something like that yeah like god will never leave you nor forsake you so they have this hope to hold on to because it's gonna get hard where yeah, they, if they were shelled by the russians and would blown to smithereens you would still say yeah. god did not let them down i would say if they put their hope in jesus there is a promise after this life does that make sense so they have this hope in jesus that mm -hmm. if when these things do happen like wars are going to happen but like mm -hmm. i think what can get them through even the hardest times is knowing that there is a god that has created them for a purpose okay. and i think with creation it's asking like well, there has to be a creator with creation you know and so mm -hmm. i don't know if that would make sense yeah i mean Okay, like, the, the, have you heard of the problem of evil? That's kind of what I'm alluding to. Problem of evil. Yeah. Say more. Okay. So think about two households with two sets of parents. Right. In one household, you have good parents. In the other household, you have bad parents. And they both have three children. Mm -hmm. Now, if I said that the bad parents, they're really bad. They're awful. The worst. 
that generally expectations about how the household is. If they have, if we were to see things like beaten children, starving children, uneducated children, you know, um, undisciplined children, then that's evidence that ah, or confirms they're not very good parents, mm-hmm. right? If they were really good parents, then our expectation would be that the children children are well fed, well educated, right. well disciplined, and et cetera, et cetera, not beaten. Right. Okay. Um, so the idea is that good and evil make generate expectations uh, when it comes to uh, people, uh, uh, powerful figures. So like a good parent, a good president, a good mayor, a good teacher, a good God. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then if goodness generates expectations, so like if we had a world where there's a good God and a world where there's an evil God, how do we, how we would we know whether there's a good or evil God? Well, just like with the households, we look at the children. Mm-hmm. Well, I look at creation. I look at the 20th century, right? I see the sheer amount of unnecessary suffering. I see genocide, great wars starvation, cancers, and I see very little effort on the part of anything other than human mitigate it, okay? Mm -hmm. And so then that makes me think, just like with the bad parents, if the kids are not well-fed, they're, you know, they're beaten and all this stuff, it's probably, they probably don't have good parents, or at least they don't have parents, right? That's how I look at creation. I look at this world, I'm like, there's probably no good God. That's a version of the problem of evil. Can I take it back to the beginning for a sec? With what you just said? Uh-huh. Um, great analogy with the parents, we'll say. Um, but in the beginning, with God, he's a good God, right? So he gave us a choice. And I would say we can both agree this world is so broken. It's insane. So cr- crazy right now. Um, and it is because we had a choice that in the beginning was the word and God created all these things and he gave gave Adam like all these things to name, do whatever, take dominion over this land and gave him a wife. I mean, you're blessed from your wife. God gave him a wife as a helper. And so, cause he didn't want man to be alone. But then what happened was, is because of the choice God put in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so basically when they were tempted of it, it questioned God's character. Like, and it questioned God, God's word. God's word was don't eat from any, don't, don't eat any of this tree or you'll surely die. You can eat anything else. I've given you literally everything, but God would not be a good God. If he just like, this is it, you know, like you don't get to choose, like you get Mm -hmm. to wake up every morning. I'm guess your name is Danny. That's so right. love your wife, like you have a choice every morning to love her in the midst of like shortcoming, all those things. And so God gave us a choice and not to be long. I just want to wrap this up quickly. Um, Do you have to go? But we decided, no, I don't have to go. I just don't want to like talk on about this. Well, you let me, you, you let me talk on uninterrupted. So I'm trying to pay you the same respect. Go ahead. Thanks. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, then we human nature like humans had this choice to make and they chose to listen to the person that questioned god's word and also god's character it literally says did god really say this or did did god really say that because god's like holding things from you he's like holding back like did he really say this no you'll surely live you'll be just like him and that's how the fallen angel happens he wanted to be like god and so this evil came in and made us question god's word question god's character and so we do live in a generation generations that are being questioned like what did god like really say god didn't say that like you need to live your life god's character forget about it like we have a fatherless generation and like you said the kids that weren't disciplined the kids that weren't loved it shows like we have so much brokenness in this world because we don't know who we are And I truly believe like because of the fall, God had to separate from us, but he had this pure heart motive to send Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And that through Jesus, we can have relationship because there had to be a sacrifice. And so with that sacrifice, it then brought us back into relationship with God. Are we perfect? Uh, No, but that's my, I know you're a true missionary, Abigail, because somehow you managed to give me the gospel in your response to, <laughs> in your response to what i'm saying right 
Every every missionary will do that. They'll try to answer your concerns, but it always ends with the gospel. All right. Um, all right. So it seems like um, you said a lot of stuff. So um, two things seem to stick out to me. Number one, there's something about God giving us a choice to love him, that mm -hmm. um, in having freedom, um, we're not like forced to love him. And given freedom, there's going to be a possibility of disobedience and sin and such like that. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, I don't think you were just saying this directly, but I think you believe in something like the curse of sin, that part of this creation groans because of the decisions that mm -hmm. we've made as, as Adam and Eve, right? Um, but my, my question is, um, can there be, will there be sin in heaven when you're there? No. Okay. Will you love God when you're there? Yeah. Okay. So it seems like God can create an area, a locality, where you can love God to the greatest extent, and sin is just not possible. Mm -hmm. So um, if God God doesn't need to give this kind of weird type of free will where we can sin, he can give us a type of free will where we can choose to love him freely, and sin is just not possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, what, there's walk. other issues too, but go ahead. Well, no, I just gave that analogy with the base, like the basis of your saying of the parents, like the three kids, bad parents, three kids, good parents, fathered well, blah, blah, blah. So that's uh -huh. like a nations now. It's like we need fathers, we need mothers to really be there. And God disciplines those he loves. And that's why with the relationship with Jesus, we're bringing heaven here to earth as like we walk in righteousness, not in our own righteousness, but right, here's a question for you, Abigail. Okay. You think that there's a good creator, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How would human history be different if there was an evil creator? Hmm. I mean, I think we already have an evil creator. The de like the enemy's deceitful. You, you think there's an, you I think, guess. because I take God to be the creator. Right. But you don't have you don't think God is evil. No, there's like creative people. No, so the creator, okay. We're I'm, you think there's a good creator that's God, right? Yes. Okay. I don't think there's someone like God that's evil. That's right. There I'm not so, saying there is. I'm saying what if there was an evil creator rather than a good creator? And I'm asking how would human history be different? I think if there was an evil creator, he wouldn't have made us in his image. In God's image. Okay, but how would, would... Okay, so there wouldn't be any humans? Not in made in God's image. Okay, would there be a human history? Oh, let's see. I don't know. If I don't... I'll, if I, like, try to be, like, an evil creator, I'm thinking I would just have destruction. I would have wars. I would have death. Ongoing death, actually, if I was an evil creator. Okay. Abigail, there's ongoing death and wars and all of that. Right, but only that. There would be zero hope. Okay, but what if the evil creator created hope so they can just crush it later? Well, our hope is... Well, I mean, that's if there's an evil creator. Like, there's that. Have, do you? Are you a Marvel fan? No, sorry. Me neither. Uh, okay, well, there's this guy, evil guy named Claw, and he, like, unalives a bunch of people. I don't know if you're, you said you're new to lives. We can't say the K word, um, kill, <laughs> but oh, really? anyway, he, I'm so he, sorry. I've never been alive. I say it all the time, but we're okay, supposed to not say it. Know. Anyway, he unalives a bunch of people, but he leaves one person alive and he tells them, look, I'm gonna let you go. So go ahead and see your way out. And that the guy, you know, is probably really hopeful. I'm gonna live. And he turns and as he runs, he, claw shoots him anyway. Right. And if yeah. he was evil, maybe he might have just loved the idea that, oh, they had hope before I just shot him down like a dog, right? So mm -hmm. it seems like hope can be an instrument for an evil, a sadistic God. Okay. So I'm just saying, look, I mean, and, and another thing is that if you're saying that if there was an evil creator, you would expect to be to see genocide and de death and suffering. Well, then those things are evidence of an evil God. So all the evil that you see in human history is evidence of if there is a creator, that creator not being a good creator. 
And so that's kind of my problem. The evil God exist. Well, I'm, I don't think there is a creator period, but if there were a creator, I would definitely think he's not good. I, I just, if this is the world that the creator wanted, that's an insult to the creator. No, because what he intended in the Garden of Eden is nothing like this. It was peace, harmony, all those things, but then... Okay, I respect that, but what's happening here is that you're saying that this is not the world that God intended. No, not at all. So that... But he had the power to bring about the world that he wanted. Take, he did. For instance, heaven. Heaven he is a place did. where everyone freely loves God and there can't be sin. And that's so, why he sent Jesus... To die on the cross for our sin, so he became sin, so we did not have to pay that price. But yeah, well, I, I don't know. Um, do you? I, I, I'm fine if you've understood me. Um, I'm probably going to move on to the next person. Is there anything else you want to talk about? So I was wondering if I could just pray for you. If okay, that, look. Have you seen Wizard of Oz? Oz? Is, is that okay on a live? Have you seen Wizard of Oz, Abigail? No. No I way. I'm not a movie person. I mean, maybe if I was like 12, I saw that when I was 12. You've never seen Wizard of Oz? Do you know who the Wicked, the Witch, Wicked Witch of the West is? Wait, no, I think I know one thing from that. Like, the I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. <laughs> That's is Alice that in there? Wonderland. That's oh, Alice God, I'm so Wonderland. Seeing, no, I've never seen Wizard of Oz. Oh, so my gosh. Were you homeschooled? No, dude, I went to public school. It was rough. Okay. Uh, yeah, because you're a missionary. A lot of missionary kids are homeschooled. And then they probably, did, did you have a TV growing up? I got saved when I was 18. But okay. I had a TV. I just watched the same thing on repeat, bench warmers. What did you watch on repeat? Bench warmers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't have to get it. That's going to be something. Okay, I'm going to be. I'm going to laugh randomly tomorrow and people are going to be confused. We're going to be laughing about this moment. But um, anyways, in The Wizard of Oz, there's an evil character named the Wicked Witch of the West. Do you know how they kill her? Uh, they no, pour water on her. You said the key word. Don't yeah, I know. I, I break my own rules. Um, oh, my God. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the – sorry, that was a bad joke. I don't mean to blaspheme. Uh, the, the idea is that in Wizard of Oz um, – the, they kill the Wicked of the Witch of the West because Dorothy, the main character, inadvertently throws water on her and water makes her melt. And I'm just saying for atheists, prayer is like our water. Mm. Okay. But truly, I mean... So you um, don't... Oh, you're an atheist. That makes sense. Okay. Got it. Yeah. No, but I, I do appreciate the, 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 the prayer. But my chat... I've actually... I don't really care if you pray for me, but chat is very sensitive, Right. Every time I allow a Christian to pray for me, they just melt. Okay. They will. Okay. So I, for the sake of chat, um, you know, do you have discord? Um, yes. Okay. Well, if you ever want to talk about this stuff and then pray for me at the end, you can do that. But, um, discord. I have no problem, but I, for the sake of chat, you know, they're, they're like, you know, they're the spawn of Satan essentially. And prayer just is like, not, you know, not very healthy. Only because I was thinking, I feel like the only person I could personally, like, prove God exists is through your, like, own revelation of him. And so I'll, like, do the, like, the P-R-A-Y <laughs> on the side for you <laughs> and your followers. And yeah, yeah, they need it. They really do need it. Okay, they need to get, my chat needs to go to church every day, Abigail, right? I'm a saint compared to my chat. Hey, you could okay. be in a garage and not be a car, so... Just because you go to church, don't make you a Christian. But I really do appreciate your request. Good okay? talking with you. Thanks for and my first live ever. With absolutely, be people. careful. There's some mean ones out there. I, you, I'm I'm usually mean, but I was nice to you. I hope they follow me. The mean ones? Yeah, blessed are the persecuted. I told you this. Okay, well then you're gonna love TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really so called to influence. So, if you love being um, berated, I mean, I mean, look, they're not all of my atheist friends are really chill but you know they're they're bad eggs in every in every tribe so to speak so um anyways i'm gonna move on okay okay i will follow and talk to you soon yeah i'll follow you too all right bye, bye. Abigail. all right very um very sweet guys with that 
I'm going down. I didn't get very much sleep. Um, <laughs> I see Trey says I'm one of them. Um, Trey, you're you're so funny because you say the exact same shit I say, and then they hate you for it. But somehow they respect me for even though I say the exact same shit. That's that's your struggle, man. Um, I'm probably gonna end it here. You were I was nice to her. I, I the I had to look. She was very sweet, to be fair, and she listened to me. She didn't freak out <laughs> like these Christians. They go in panic mode, right? She wasn't in panic mode. You could tell that she's like the real deal. You know, she's like really, she really cares. You know, these other little Christians that run around on TikTok, they don't give a fuck. Okay, these other little apologists, they don't give a fuck. She did. I could tell. No, I didn't see that live, Trey. All right. Good night, guys. Stay away from water. <laughs> Stay away from prayer. Keep safe, guys. Stay safe.